This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this Nintendo Switch with no power button functionality so the thing turns on if you dock it with a USB-C cable then it will power up, turn on, charge and behave perfectly well uh, the volume up and down buttons are working fine but the power button isn't so the only way to turn the machine on is to put the charger up at the bottom uh, the only way to turn it off is to leave it to go to sleep or pull the battery, that's it so we're here today to have a, a look and see why that might be now this particular switch looks like it's been in the wars a little bit um, so it looks like it's had a bit of work already done to it so let's take a look and see what's going on here and, then, and just see what what's developing so there's the battery we can see the battery whilst it may not be obvious through the microscope camera is bulging so we're definitely gonna have to change that there you go that is the top water indicator by the front USB as you can see there that's red so it's definitely had water in here at some point um, one or two you can see there there's a little bit of liquid going on here look Just the odd sign of it there uh, a couple of the joints look a bit dark the battery of course is disconnected before we start and uh, yeah I mean some of these here don't look particularly great. It looks like somebody's run some solder across here at some point. Uh, M92. We can see there's a tiny bit of blue-green stuff here. That's usually a sign of water. Um, again, is that a bit of crust there on that bottom left corner? Let's have a look. Mm, yeah, it is. So there's a, there's a little bit of water got in here. But the thing does turn on, it does seem to run perfectly fine whilst it's on. It's got a bit of uh, pen on here, but as you can see, there is definitely some signs of liquid going on. Uh, let's have a look down here then. So this is the fan connector. Again, fan works perfectly fine. Everything seems to work, aside from the power button. Uh, <laughs> so that's the actual flex now. With the power and volume buttons the connector itself looks absolutely fine now then just down here there is a little bit of something going on as you can see looks a bit tarnished down here this looks interesting so there may be something in there to work with we shall see but the actual ribbon itself i can tell you already is fine so this here is the as i say the power volume flex so this has three buttons and a ground so basically what happens is when you press the buttons it shorts across the button so basically it basically sends a signal to ground so this big point here is ground and then these here volume up down and power so let's just see if i can work out from looking at it which is which so it looks to me as though the top one is volume down. Yep, so that top pin there is volume down by looking at it. That one's volume plus, that's ground, and the bottom one is power. And it's the bottom one that we're having trouble with. These top two are fine, uh, and it's the bottom one, it's the power on function that isn't working. Now I've tested this ribbon, and essentially what I've done, just to show you on the microscope so you can test this for yourself if you need to but essentially this here I'll zoom you out is the volume flex so doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go so yeah so you can see here look so we have on the left hand side that one is power volume down and volume up okay so what happens is when you push this this side of the ribbon talks to this side so you can see the bottom side of all these buttons is connected oh, the top side on this particular one but it doesn't matter is basically connected to ground and then once you push this it connects this side and the small trace 
this side and the small trace and this side and the small trace across so basically it shorts these pins on the on the smaller trace to ground and that is how the switch detects it's being pressed it knows obviously which button is being pressed and therefore it can either turn your switch on and off turn the volume down or turn the volume up and as you can see the buttons all click i have tested these with a multimeter and indeed one probe here one probe here and when you press them and you press them in they beep continuity to ground so we know that the buttons themselves are working and i also know that this connector here which is the flex connector where fbc connector where they plug in i know that this is fine so as i say i know the ribbon is working i know that when i test across the connector i get continuity if i flip this up and go to the actual pin itself uh, hopefully you can still hear the beep if i can get, can get my multi-meter multi -meter probe on there reliably okay and then essentially what happens is it goes from this pin here down onto the back of this resistor so let's just see if we've got continuity to there my multimeter battery is going flat as well by the way so this, this is not going to make this any easier There you go. So we have continuity from the ribbon all the way through the connector down onto the back of this resistor. So that seems absolutely fine. So let's take a look and see what's going on here because it does look like there's a little bit of tarnishing going on on the board. So I will just put this power flex back where it lives for now. Okie doke. All right, let's zoom in and let's take a closer look at what's going on. So we can see there look, we have a little bit of mottling going on on various bits and pieces. It's hard to tell what that is, I mean by the colour. So uh, let's have a look. So yeah, that doesn't look particularly great, does it? Um, <laughs> no, that does not look very good at all. So let's get a bit of isopropyl alcohol on the go and a cotton bud. Now let's just clean this up and see what we've got to work with. So hopefully. So I'll just put a dab on there. And we'll just see if we can't give this a bit of a, a bit of a scrub and a bit of a clean just to see what we've got, what we haven't. Okay. I'm doing very well for light, are we? I don't know why the camera doesn't seem to be picking up this the light here very well. Not entirely sure why that is, because the board itself is lit pretty well. I think I may have to look into uh, upgrading this HDMI camera, maybe. One that does a little bit better in fairly low light conditions. But this, the, uh, the ring light on the microscope is plenty bright enough. I mean, by eye, <laughs> looks absolutely fine. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. I don't know if I can knock the image brightness up. Maybe I can. Let's just have a quick try. Right, okay. So I've well, I've done my best, but uh, I'm not sure how much better that actually is. Um, but let's have a look then. So we can see there, look, that there is definitely something going on. So the actual resistor at the top there that the pin itself goes into looks absolutely fine that resistor looks nice and clean the one underneath it however it doesn't look the best in the world does it i'm trying to see actually if that trace is there a trace between the two there it looks like there is to me yeah it looks like there's a connection there directly between the top and the bottom and then it goes from the top of here up here somewhere and there's a pad here that doesn't look the best like it's got some crap on it so mm, where it goes there i'm not entirely sure it seems to go back underneath this connector and out somewhere onto here maybe so yes so it looks to me 
there, like there is definitely something between the top and the bottom of that resistor. Let's just see if we can't get a continuity reading between the top and bottom of those two resistors. Let's just see if we've got anything at all. This mat is moving whenever I put pressure on the board, which is making the picture go out of focus, which, you know, is useful. Yeah, there is. So there is continuity there. And then, like I say, it seems to go from this resistor here and up. There's nothing there, I don't think. There's nothing there. Okay. Alright. So... There's definitely a little bit of something going on, so that may be the problem. So, we can see here, look, that this bottom side of this resistor here goes, looks like it comes from the bottom. There's a tiny bit of green there, and it comes out to this right-hand side here, out into this big area here, and this is ground, which makes sense if this is a pull-up resistor. So, you press the button, that grounds out, essentially, and that shorts this line, and that's what's detected on the other side. So... Yeah, so that makes sense then, doesn't it? So, if we've got no continuity at all between here and here and here and here, because basically it goes out of here, comes down from the connector over this resistor onto this resistor through to ground, and then, like I say, it looks like there's a, a connection into this point here. But we aren't getting any continuity from this test point at all to the top of this resistor or indeed the bottom of this resistor, which we should do if the circuit is as nature intended it to do. And I suspect it's just either a bit of crap or a bit of corrosion, which is stopping it talking. So let's just see. As I say, we know the flex is good. We've tested it. So and the connector seems good. So it has to be somewhere here, and this would make absolute sense. So yeah, there's absolutely no continuity at all there. So let's just see what we can do then. So I'm just going to put a bit of fume extraction on and we'll see if we can't do something with this trace. Right, okie doke. So let's see what we can do with this then. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is just see if we can't put a bit of solder onto the test point and onto the top of that resistor just to bring them back up, you know, a little bit no more normal. Because at the minute they look heavily mottled as though they've been getting a bit of stick from mother nature's uh, loctite a bit of rust a bit of corrosion i'm gonna be really careful here not to melt anything i really don't want to just gonna work in the top of that resistor just try and use a bit of the heat to uh So I've got that resistor on the end of my tweezer blade. So I'm just going to pop that safely to one side for now. Let's just have a look at this pad. Because it doesn't look the happiest, does it? So I'm just going to get my IPA back in here and just give it a quick squirt. Okie dokie. So we can see there that there is indeed a pad there to solder to. So that's where our resistor used to live. Okay, so that looks okay there now. So we could see before that there was a bit of mottling. There wasn't really much there. So that looks a lot better than it did. What I want to do is I'm just going to see if I can do something with that test pad just at the top there. So you can see there, hopefully. Gonna pop a bit of flux down on the board again. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit too much, it soon cleans off. So I'm just gonna come in here and just see if we can't work. Just pad a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, that's a bit of a shame. So we can see there look, that the pad itself looks like it's pretty much gone, to be honest. Doesn't look like there's a lot left of it, does it? No, that doesn't look very good at all. So you can just about see where it should be. You can kind of see it comes up there. And then it should go across that test point. But that test point has been completely eaten away. So I can see a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of trace just there where my tweezer blade is. But it disappears back under this connector. And then that there, where the tiny bit of silver is here, just where my tweezer blade is, that's where the bottom of that test pad should be. As we can see, there's just nothing there. It's completely eaten away. So, <laughs> that's not the best result we could have hoped for, really. So, we can jump it with a piece of wire that's not really a problem uh, so yeah we can do that without too much faff right okay so you can just about see the stub end of this trace here that goes under back underneath this connector so that's where this trace goes this test point is completely gone and then it connects to this trace here so you can just see the bottom of it there where my tweezer blade currently is and then it goes all the way up and it goes to this trace here which is right by the bottom of this connector which is proving a right old git to get anything to solder to so I'm going to give it my best shot anyway <laughs> we'll see if we get anything to stick the only problem is is that this trace is quite weak and uh, the corrosion's actually gotten underneath it and it's lifted most of it out so my concern is is that either is that that trace there is weak itself and it's potentially broken at the end you know me trying to solder to it is not going to be helping that if that is indeed the case I haven't said that soldered particularly well at the minute I really don't want to rip any more of that off because if I do you see the thing is on the scope it looks massive but in reality it's not it's a tiny run so the moment you apply any heat it just wants to figging wander off which is precisely what it's doing Right, have we got it? Is that it? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to try and source from somewhere one of those resistors at the bottom. The only trouble is I don't think I have another board to hand <laughs> that I can either nick one from or at least measure the damn thing to see what resistance value it is right so as we can see there now we have our wire in place it's taken some doing but it's there so, so let's see Yeah, it's there. It's definitely stuck in place. I just want to know where it goes. It, it must come down here. It looks like it does. It looks like it goes up. It's kind of hard to tell because it goes underneath the connector, you see. I'd have to lift the connector to find that one out, but I don't fancy that, to be honest. So... 
you know, for now while it's uh, <laughs> it's it's where it should be I am uh, gonna leave it so I'm just gonna make sure this is soldered correctly on the end of this trace fairly sure that it is Yep, that's definitely in place now, so. <laughs> That'll do. So I don't know if this is going to work without that bottom resistor. I honestly don't know. Right, okay. So, essentially, that wire is now in place. Doesn't look the best under the scope camera, I know, but... <laughs> as I say, it is my machine, so I'm not particularly fussed. That resistor, to be honest, I think was being a bit of a sod to solder to because one end of it was missing. <laughs> so basically the corrosion had eaten the top side of that connector. When, I, when it came off and I had a look on the other side, there was nothing there. It was just black. So no wonder it wouldn't solder and it was being a bit of a sod. I did suspect as much that that may be the case, but sometimes you can get lucky. As I say, on a customer unit, I'd replace it. On mine, yeah, if I could have got it to solder, I'd have kept it on there. But it wasn't happening, was it? So, <laughs> as I say, I haven't got another switchboard to hand at the minute to, to measure the cap from. I do have another one in the, in the shop, but it's not to hand and it's in one piece. So I can't be bothered dismantling it. So I'm just going to tidy these pads up here. Yeah, it's a bit of flux on there. That'll do. As I say, to be honest, like I said, this is mine, so I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really mind. I can come back in here and replace it at some point, if needs be. As long as it turns it on and off, that's all I really care about. Not particularly fussed about anything else, really. Then what I'll do is I'll get some conformal coat, some overcoat pen. Anybody who's watched the channel for a while will know what this stuff is. So basically this is just solder mask. MG chemical, uh, catalog number 419DPGR. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit of this out. So that just covers that up. So, I think it will work without that bottom resistor, to be honest. I think it'll be okay. If it doesn't, as I say, we can just crack another one open, measure it, and then I'll have to see if I can pick one off from somewhere. But, uh, for now at least, it'll do. So, as you can see there, I've squeezed some overcoat pen out onto there. That'll take around 5-10 minutes to cure. And then that will just keep that wire safer out of harm's way hopefully as you can see though this unit is definitely seen better days that's the flex cable for the display the display itself does have some damage it works but it's got some like pressure points on it it's obviously been hit before with something um, everything else though looks okay so what we'll do is we'll put a battery on and we'll see if it works. All right then, ladies and gentlemen. So we have um, a new battery hooked up to this switch. So I wasn't going to plug the other battery in <laughs> uh, and start charging it because that battery is definitely in dire need of a very urgent replacement. So what I've done here is I've just hooked up um, a test battery I've got here. And uh, the power button is at the top left of the machine, so let's see if it will now power up. Because we're still missing that resistor, and there we go. Yep, lovely stuff, so that's booting. So, yeah, I, I still i am not entirely sure what that resistor is for. Um, but, as you can see, that power button works perfectly fine without it, and uh, that's that's 
good to know. I mean, this is my unit anyway, so I'm not particularly fussed about that resistor being missing as long as it as long as it works. You know, that's the main thing for me, and it does. And as we can see, so I can tap it, turn it on. I can tap it, turn it off. You know, so everything's fine there. If I press and hold, there we go. You know, power options, power off. The digitizer's a bit flaky on this one as well. So <laughs> it's sort of like phantom pressing. There are some pressure marks on the LCD, so I think it's just had a bit of a whack, as well as a bit of liquid on it. So it's it's been in the wars this one, but as I say, it's quite a an interesting little thing, and it's useful for my project um, I have going on at the moment so yeah I mean this is as you can see all working perfectly fine so that's it ladies and gentlemen so on this one it was a bit of an awkward one because the scale of what you're working with is is tiny and like I said we did lose the end off one of the resistors there because it all corroded away that trace uh, had just corroded away completely underneath and that's a similar sort of thing to what we saw on the EO7 Xbox hard disk drive timeout the original one um, that we did a, probably a couple of years ago back now, uh, where it had a little bit of corrosion from a tiny little nick from a screwdriver by the LPC header on uh, one of the IDE tracers. And albeit at the time it didn't look so bad, it looked just like a break in the trace, but underneath it had got underneath the copper and the conformal coat. So as soon as you tried to work it, it just all flaked away and just broke away just leaving a big void there and that's essentially what's happened here but we were really lucky because there was a tiny tiny little nick of the end of the trace still visible that was stuck out from the corner of the connector it was so small that i'm not entirely sure how i've managed to get a wire on there to be honest without a micro soldering pencil um i did have a really fine hook tip on on my soldering iron that's the only way i managed to do it um but yeah i mean i, I think we got a bit lucky there to be honest um, I would like to know where that trace goes. So if anybody knows uh, where that trace goes without me having to sort of butcher one apart and have a look myself, uh, then you'd be saving me five minutes and it'd be much appreciated. Um, but yeah, so I mean, as you can see, this one's all working. And, uh, you know, as I say, as it's mine, I'm not particularly fussed that it, it wasn't the best job in the world. But uh, yes, so thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you've enjoyed this and you found it useful. If you have, as always, then I'd ask if you could just give me a thumbs up down there. Just lets me know what I'm doing is all good and well, and that you're uh, you're enjoying it and that you're you're learning things. And um, as I say, if this is your bag and you like what you've seen, uh, there's plenty of other videos on the channel. I think there's probably about 120 videos on there now. All similar sort of stuff, fiddling about with tech and component level repair. So if that sounds like your thing, then feel free to hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, and then you'll be notified when we have any future uploads hit the channel. Uh, I do tend to have a regular slot going uh, now, which is nice. It's the first time I've ever managed that. That's Wednesdays, UK time, 6 p.m. So um, over on the east coast of the States there, I think you're five hours behind, so that'll be about one o'clock your time afternoon on the east coast there with around New York and that sort of thing. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching and sticking by me, ladies and gentlemen. You have been absolutely fantastic recently, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Some of the nice comments I've had on videos recently is actually quite humbling. You know, I just want you guys to know that <laughs> I really, really appreciate you. Uh, I always have and I always will and I thank you from the bottom of my heart that uh, you know you give me the the drive to keep going with this sort of stuff so um, thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen as always you've been fantastic I've been Andy Paul this switch has been a bit of a nightmare but we got there in the end uh, and I will see you on the next video next week unless we have one early I think I may very well put one up at the weekend uh, in regards to the PS4 HDMI patch, for those of you who don't know, there will be a video on the channel probably up before this one. Uh, it might even go up the same day, but it will be up earlier than this one. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check the link in the description, go check it out. It's uh, essentially a piece of kit for fixing PS4 HDMI ports where the PCB has been severely damaged and you can't no longer sol solder a port to it. It's a little patch that sits over, solders in place really nice and quick. 
and uh, it just allows you to install a new HDMI port as you would normally do. Initially available for the PS4 original models, that's those with the SAA and SAB001 motherboards in there. If that sounds like it's going to be of interest to you, uh, then go check that out. Uh, orders are live at the moment, and don't worry if you do miss out on the initial small quantity I have, uh, new stock will be heading on its way shortly, so feel free to uh, contact me and get those orders in. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you, as I say, probably see you on the weekend with that more detailed video all being well. Uh, other than that, I will see you next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. So for me, for now, it's bye-bye. Thank you very much. Hope life treats you well. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you soon. Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.